Hello, dear aquarists. And maybe today something interesting for the pond lovers, the people who have a, a outdoor pond and keeping uh, cold water fish or something similar in their ponds. I have a case for you that I encountered during my work. And it's about uh, a grass carp, a grass carp that was presented to me and well, uh, let me share you my uh, PowerPoint. It's uh, case number 82. And about the grass carp Ctenopharyngodon idella. That's uh, the scientific name. Most people only know the name grass carp, which is enough for you that you know you're dealing with that animal that needs special care. And today we had one with a, a mix of infections. Well, it, it was a, a terrible case, like you see here, this fish look at the the patches on the body look at the the fins the pectoral fin the tail all uh, damaged the the dorsal fin and uh, look how badly this fish was damaged and it's not was not only the only one it was one from a group of fish which was doing it um, very badly and, and dying and wasting away so it uh, was even emaciated very skinny of course, when the fish is looking so badly, a uh, bit damaged, fin rots, well, you can imagine he will not be hungry and eating a lot. And we, we checked, of course, the first the skin, and after the scrape, we found lots of bacteria here, all colonies of bacteria, probably also some columnaris bacteria in between, probably two, three kinds of bacteria which are sitting on the scales, on the fins of the fish, here we see it on a video, the whole groups of bacteria here clustered together. And of course, uh, damaging uh, the tissue, damaging the scales and having a, a, a poor uh, impact, a bad impact on the fish and keeping it in very poor condition. We also found some uh, black parasites and between the mucus, between the scales. Look, here is one, here is one, here is one tree. And there are white spots, parasites. Not clearly to see because they are uh, in, inside the mucus and in, underneath the scales. But if you look clearly, you see the, the, the organism, the dark brown uh, organism. They don't look white in the microscope, I tell you. They look white because of the, the, the mucus layer and the outside of the fish when we look with our naked eyes. But in the microscope, they look dark. And here you see, one swimming around. Uh, it's a special behavior. It's not the behavior like the normal ichthyopterius or ich we know. Look, looks different, moves very fast, moves strange, not so slowly uh, circling around like uh, the common white spot uh, we know. And here we see it again. We see it here sitting more quietly here. And we can see here, we notice that the nucleus it's quite different form than the U-shaped nucleus. Nucleus is a U-shaped nucleus we normally know uh, from our uh, normal ichthyopterius. And here is another ich ich white spot here. And this one we call the new ich or neo ichthyopterius Schlottfeldi. Nice name, identified already a couple many years ago and becoming unfortunately more common in our aquarium industry and aquarium hobby and needs different care, different treatment. Skin scraping also showed we had a few uh, stalked, ciliated protozoa that looks like epistylis here. They can also penetrate into the, the mucus. Oh, look at this. There's a white spot quickly moving around. Yeah, this is the unusual uh, white spot uh, parasite, Neoictopterius. But what we found else, which was very serious, were gill flukes, massive gill flukes. And of course, secondary bacterial infections. And look here in the gills. Also inside the gills, there are encapsulated metasecaria with worm larvae from the tree, diagenetic trematodes. Look here, all worm larvae deforming the gills, deformation of the gills very badly. So the fish was already weakened because of those encapsulated metasecaria. And if you know something about the cycle of those metasecaria, they're coming usually 
from a combination of birds and snails in an outdoor pond. So this is poor management by the farmer where there are birds flying around and snails in the water. And then the fish is an intermediate host where the larvae here are waiting you can say to be eaten by a larger fish or like a bird in this, in most cases. And then it can continue to, to make a cycle. But the, look, the gills are badly damaged. There are gill flukes, secondary bacterial infections in the gills. Well, that looks terrible. And then also the over organs. Yeah, of course, what you expect. The liver here and the right is the spleen already also invaded uh, with bacteria. So the fish has Wow, very bad case of many mix of, of infections. What can you do about it? Yeah, yeah. first of all, maybe a poor history of poor diagnosis, that it's not correctly diagnosed, that maybe people see this fish you now with fin and tail rot. Well, we just use an antibiotic and we, we, we try to clear the, the fin rot or the tail rot. No, the major part, first thing is, is, is trying to do a good diagnosis and to know when the fish have so many metasarcaria, you cannot treat. No, but you can control to treat this, the fluke treatment, you know, an anti-fluke treatment like, like Persicotel used to be a good one. Uh, your, check, check with your suppliers, you know, there's many different ones on the market. Sometimes they change because of laws or regulations, some are permitted or some are not. Ask your veterinarian, he can get for you. An antibacterial treatment is necessary, an anti neo treatment. You know, neo treatment is something that needs a lot of salt. Salt, neo, the neo ick the new ick doesn't like salt treatments. I have special videos on that on my YouTube uh, channel on the new white spot disease and how to treat. Uh, you can, of course, help with food again. Like I said, the food is a very important part of caring for your fish because the fish has to repair itself. The medication kills maybe bacteria or parasites, but the food is something that the fish needs to repair and, and to help to fight off uh, the parasitic and bacterial infection. And in this case, I would recommend the biofish food garlic or the, uh, the matrine or, or maybe professional uh, or, professional, or professional range, but it's the matrine which is also gonna help against the white spot. And a very weak fish, well, better put it to sleep. It won't help. So this was a case for the, the, the cold water fish lover. And of course, I have more to come. Some will be might be about goldfish, some maybe about koi. So stay tuned and I hope you can learn more about my cases that I encountered during my work as a fish doctor. Thank you for watching.